Hi everyone, this is the fourth tutorial part where I will show you how to drain YOLO 3 to detect custom objects. So I'll try to detect that, uh, car license plate. So in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to explain to you an easy way to train YOLO V3 on TensorFlow 2 uh, how to detect a custom object even if you are a beginner or even if you have no experience with coding. So first step is to prepare the image dataset. An image dataset is folder containing a lot of images. I suggest at least a few hundreds of, of them or these images. So uh, where there is a custom object you want to detect as you can see that I, a part of images I am downloading from Google image search so this is uh, one of examples where you can download uh, your custom uh, dataset For example, to do these steps, it takes a lot of time. So I recommend at first Google, where you can download, for example, uh, all these images without labels. Because I, I chose here a hard part, how to get these images, because as you can see, it quite takes a lot of time to drag uh, all images or if you do save as and give always different name and to get old for example this data set for around few hundred images would eat your time so it's much much simpler to search for these images for example on google data set as i showed you in my previous tutorial also, I would say that having these images is not enough. We also need to specify where the custom objects are located on the specific image. This means that we must label them. So this is also no also one of the huge job which we must do before uh, training. So. Uh, for this operation, we'll need an external software. Uh, I'll use the one of the most popular label IMG. You can use it for Windows, Mac, Linux, it doesn't matter. So as you, as you can see, I opened the GitHub repository of this open source software. And there is full instructions how to install and, and run this uh, software on your own operation. So first, uh, because I'm on Linux, it, I'll try to show you how to do this step by step. So I, I open a terminal and of course, first what I need to do is download or clone this repository. So I write git clone and copy the link. It might took a while because I have a quite fast internet for me it doesn't take a lot of time so I open the label IMG folder and try to run it I found label IMG but I didn't follow the instructions I need to make qt5 py3 library so I write I make it and try to run it again Python label IMG pi and as you can see it already opened so first step I do I open a directory where is my images custom data set as you can see and and now actually we are ready to label these images so first step you need to do you click on rectangular box here and or I press W and I I drag on my object write a label for, for this object and save it and I do this for second image third fourth and so on I will do so give me a moment to do these steps for you So as you can see, this, I, I chose a quite cool course from my repository and I 
I'm doing this step by step, of course, and I'll do I label only 10 images. Well, actually, all images I have. Yeah, I think I have 10 of them. So at the end of these full operations, uh, in the same folder, we should see XML files for each image with the same name. Uh, so what I'll do next, so I didn't want to waste time labeling images uh, just for this draw. So I searched for already labeled images with the same XML labels. I found this cool data set, as you can see from Robert Lucian. And I downloaded it and I'll co I download it and I'll copy all images and labels to train and test files respectively. So from as I said, I have a really fast internet here on my computer. So it for me it, it is quite fast, but for you this might take some time. So uh, so let's see how it looks this data set. <clears throat> These are the images I will copy, and here, here is validation images. And now, what I'll do, I'll, I'll try to copy all of this to to my custom dataset image. So, <clears throat> sorry, I renamed the validation uh, folder to test. And of course, I'll cut all of XML labels and cut, cut all the images to one folder. And of course, I'll delete everything in test. And of course, I'll de do all everything the same for the train folder. And of course, images. Cut, copy, paste, and delete everything. So I have here 10 labeled images, so I actually I could, could copy them, but let's first check how our downloaded uh, dataset looks like. As you can see here, he, uh, he labeled images from his re registrator of the cars, and as you can see, He have a lot of images actually. He did a big good work. And okay, it's fine for me. I'll use this data set for training. So let's merge my data with his train image data. And that's it. As you can see, I already have prepared a MindMall uh, data set for training at least images and labels. Now I need to go to XML to YOLO V3 script, as I told in my previous tutorial, and I'll convert these labels to YOLO V3 labels. So, so what you first need to do is write where it will be your, where is your data. So, I'll, write it as custom data set and next uh, write well where will save your txt files of class names license license plate train annotations and license plate test annotations so that's it and of course because i don't have a subfolders here as in my previous tutorial i'll need to write a fault and yeah let's Run this, and as you can see, data set was quite short. It finished doing these tasks and it generated our files here. As you can see, so you should receive the same files if you would like to train your custom model. So that's it. We already have a prepared data set for training. What next we should do? Um, we need to change our configs.py file. So first, what I'll do is I'll go to. No, if everything's fine here. So first, what I will do, I go to your with the folder. I open my configs.py folder file. I mean, and here I'll write 
the names of these files. So I need to, to train, change train classes, train annotation paths, uh, and test annotation path uh, lines. And of course, I recommend to use train data augmentation as true and train transfer as true. And if you don't know why, just check my pre previous tutorial. Now we can try to run this Python train.py script and let's see what we'll receive. Let's little shortly, it should start training. Well, actually, because I have a GPU, it will be quite fast for me. And as you can see, it generated only 55 training steps. Not that much. And now Moodle keeps training. What you should do is just wait to finish for training. I think I have 100 steps to train, so it's not a problem for me. Let's wait for it to train it. Now, of course, we can check how our model is training. So best way to do is check in on TensorBoard. But I would I don't want to show you how it's training because it takes a lot of time. So see you after it finished training. I will open a TensorBoard and we'll see how it performs. So see you later. So welcome back after a while and it seems it finished training it, it finished for 99 steps and right now to check how our model was training best to check it on tensorboard so i open another terminal and i'll write tensorboard tens log dir equal to log there's my tensorboard logs i copy the link and of course i'll open it on the browser <clears throat> so learning doesn't matter for us right now and as you can see here is the results of our trainer so here you can see the, all the graphs where you can see all the losses used in the training process and what i should say the most important is well date loss as you can see and you might you might ask why it's most important and that's quite simple lower the value of well date loss better the model is in this example my curve is too correct to be true but only because my data set is small and lack diversity so if you check my previous tutorial you saw that with large data set it's quite different it's wiggling very much very a lot and as you can see here uh, value is the most important parameter here for us and i can see 76 and yeah probably 76 is best for us oh here is 75 and you can probably you saw in my previous tutorial when core started growing again to to the up uh, direction and this means that our model starts to overfit and it's it's getting worse every step so it's best to use our model which is on the lower step in the lowest step on validation loss so that's it you, see, you can see and actually how long it took it 127 minutes to train this model on my gpu and that's quite fast as you will as you think so right now, I think you, you wait for this. Okay, I'll, I'll close this window. Our custom model is saved in checkpoints here, a folder and as YOLO custom model. To test this model, I'll open the detection custom script, this one. And I changed the image path respectively, uh, where is, which image I'll try. And for this data set, Again, I took two random images from Google and tried to detect car license plate for them. So actually, we can test this and let's see what the result will receive. I'll build this simply. So 
As you can see, it detected God 666 as a license plate. That's quite interesting license plate. Okay, now let's try another one. I got only two images, but actually that's enough to make sure that my model is working. And another one license plate for this Ferrari car. This is also quite beautiful car. And as you can see, this was quite simple, uh, how to train this model and how less steps I need. The biggest job was to prepare data set for everything. That's it. And now for the end, I should say that it was quite simple and short tutorial with detailed step-by-step -step explanations, how to train custom object detector. Even the beginner should be able to train custom detector following this my step-by-step -step tutorial. Actually, we could expand this tutorial by extracting license plate number from detected objects, but this is quite not the goal of this tutorial series. Maybe I'll come back to this task in the future, but for now, I'll move on because you are waiting for my next interesting tutorials with YOLO. Many of you might face a problem that you don't have GPU on your computer and it takes a lot of time to train custom model, especially if you have a large custom dataset. So to solve this problem, in the next part I will show you how to train this custom model on the cloud with free GPU. Actually free GPU, I'm, I'm telling to you for you, for those who don't have actually strong GPU on your laptop for example. So keep following me, like this video and we'll see you in our next tutorial. See you later.